Hey, what is up guys? Alexei Rivera here from Tech Inspected. And today we're doing uh, impressions and hands-on of the ITEL P36 Play, or more commonly known as the ITEL Vision One. This is a affordable budget phone, but it has an HD display already, 4,000 milliamp hour battery powered by a, a Spreadtrum 9863A processor, two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, and a pretty compact size six point something, 6.088 inch HD display. So it's a great little compact phone, six inch, because phones are getting bigger and bigger these days. This is a great one-handed phone for 4,000 pesos or 80 US dollars with a large battery, a decent processor and running on Android 9 Pi. This is not the Android Go variant. This is a full version Android 9 Pi. So pretty interesting specs, I'd say above average for the 4,000 peso price point. So yeah, let's give it a look right now. All right, guys, so here is the ITEL P36 Play, or also known as the ITEL Vision 1, priced at 4 thousand pesos as you can see we've already set it up but uh, before we get to that we'll show you the contents of the box as you can see it is a pretty standard itel box in this red color pretty nice looking we got a hard case with a vision logo right there we got our itel warranty policy paperwork quick start guide version one and then we have uh, 3.5 millimeter headphones and then we have a 5 watt charger and USB micro B for charging. So pretty standard uh, contents of the box here. I have to mention that the five watt charger is not very fast, but then again, it is a budget phone. You can probably use a five volts, two amp charger for faster charging maybe, but there it is. That is the contents of the box of the ITEL Vision 1. And you can see that it has the purple sort of uh, gradient color here, which has all my fingerprints right now, but we'll get to that in a bit. All right, so let's take a look at the ITEL Vision 1 here. This is a 6.088 inch display, basically a 6.1 inch HD display at uh, 1560 by 720 resolution. And you can see there's a small rounded area up top for the camera that is a five megapixel front camera rounded corners here so this is a bit more modern than itel's more affordable variants now it has sort of edge to edge display except for a little bit of a, a chin here but the display looks nice and it is hd 1560 by 720 it is ips so it looks pretty nice you can see that you can even increase the brightness and stuff like that. The user interface is actually relatively fast, but I'll talk about that later. So like I said, 6.1 inch display here. We have a pre-installed screen protector already with decent cutouts, you know, it's, it's applied quite well. And you can see all my fingerprints as well. And then on the back, we have a very glossy back. I know it's very full of fingerprints right now, but it's really hard to keep clean. We have a fingerprint scanner right there and you have your induction cooker type of camera set up on the back here, which is hard to focus on. We have a eight megapixel rear camera with a VGA secondary for the portrait mode camera shots. And this is a pretty um, standard design language right now. We have an ITEL brand right here and the vision branding here with information about the AI dual camera. This color is, I believe, gradient purple is what they call it. And you can see that the light purple is up there and it sort of turns much darker in the bottom here. And uh, it's pretty subtle, um, but if you have, if you catch the right lighting, it does look nice. And uh, it's, you know, it's the, uh, the color of Typical smartphones these days, you want to get the gradient. So it looks nice. It's very glossy though. So it picks up fingerprints a lot and it does look very plastic, but hey, can't, can't complain for a 4,000 peso phone. 
Up top we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the left we have nothing. On the bottom we have a speaker grill, micro USB slot for charging and data transfer, and then we have a pinhole microphone. On the right we have your uh, power button and volume rocker, and then on the back we have the uh, the induction cooker black camera module design with three circles, and then the fingerprint scanner, which is actually placed quite right for this kind of sized phone. Now, um, this actually has a removable back. So this is part of ITEL's brand um, products that still have removable back. So as you can see, once you remove that, you can see we have two SIM slots, both LTE and a micro SD card expansion slot. So this has full expandability, dual SIM LTE with micro SD. The rounded corners is nice and there's no sharp edges that I can feel. And you can see that I can sort of hold it really well that I can tap on the edge of the screen on the other side with my thumb. So that's a good one hand capability on a phone. Let's talk about this case. This case is a hard case with a bit of a texture. As you can see, it has a Vision logo right there, and it has proper cutouts. The weak point of this is this protector for the button that might easily crack or break, but it fits on the, the uh, phone really well, and there you have it. It looks nice as well. It does scratch kind of easily though, so I've scratched mine a few times already by putting it on a wooden unvarnished table. So there you go. That's the design of the iTel Vision 1. All right, let's take a look at the user interface of the iTel Vision 1. Now, I think this is a very good user interface. It's very smooth. I don't see a lot of lag. Surprisingly, on a 2 gig RAM product with a Spreadtrum processor, the Spreadtrum uh, 9863A. I'm not very familiar with how powerful those are, but I do have a benchmark for you later. It's still very smooth. I don't know how ITEL manages this, but you can see that switching apps is very smooth and the animations doesn't seem to drop any frames. We're recording this at 60 FPS, so you can clearly see that this thing runs quite smooth. Of course, bigger apps and stuff will have some time to load as you can see right there, but switching them and pressing home and doing all that is very, very smooth, I have to admit. I've got to give it props for that. It's Android 9 Pie with two gigs of RAM. Now, once you boot this guy up, there are some pre-installed apps and bloatware. As you can see, there's an ad here for Messi or Ronaldo. I think that's a, a game. And then there's Palm Store, and then there's this thing over here. Um, I have had to uninstall them or disable them. They're really annoying. We have the swipe back menu here with recommended apps. Here are the pre-installed apps. You can see we have Boomplay, um, Cleaner. We got uh, AHA Games, Palm Store, and stuff like that. We got uh, Shuffle. I don't remember what that was. XShare, which I already uh, also uninstalled, but you can see that you cannot uninstall stuff like Boomplay. You can only disable them. This results in some ads or notifications, but only from mostly the, the app store, the third party app stores pre-installed. So I've had them disabled. I've uh, disabled some notifications as well. Um, and I uh, got it to a relatively clean mode here. So as far as blowware is concerned, I'll give it a B plus. I think it's the same grade I gave to other ITEL phones. So B plus for blowware, but A plus for smoothness of user interface. So I got to give them props for that. And if you do go to the menus here, you can see that it's relatively customized UI here. They even have a login prompt for your account on their servers, crazy. All right, so last thing about the uh, iTel Vision 1's user interface is that it doesn't have the new Android 10 full screen gestures. It does have the swipe up gestures that was popular before that, but it doesn't have the swipe from the corners to go back and whatnot. So I've decided to use the standard uh, no navigation buttons on the bottom here. So unfortunately, if you're a fan of the new navigation for going back, you cannot use that here. You have to use the swipe up gestures or these uh, present buttons on the screen. 
All right, so a quick Antutu score here. We have 88,375 on Antutu 843. So not the best, but 88,000 surprisingly works quite well for this user interface. Like I said, it is quite smooth. I got to give it an A plus for smoothness. Uh, we have five touch points. You can't use a sixth finger, which is quite good. Five touch points is good. We got a lot of system updates recently, so that's nice as well. We have kind of few sensors here. We don't have gyroscope, for example, which is kind of a bummer. And then we do not have Widevine L1, which gives us the HD for um, Netflix. So Widevine L3 only gives you SD, standard definition Netflix as well. And then I did a quick test on the uh, throttling of the CPU, and it doesn't throttle much. As you can see, all is still in the green, so it doesn't lose much of its performance. But the temperature does go quite high at 47 degrees. Kind of crazy. But that's about it for the user interface. I do like it. Honestly, ITEL makes some of the smoothest UI for budget phones I've ever seen. So props to them for a nice UI on the Vision 1. All right, guys. So also the Vision 1 has a fingerprint scanner right at the back. And it actually is in a pretty good spot, I have to admit. Like I said, this phone has a great handleability when it comes to fingers and your hand. So the uh, fingerprint scanner g really does fit right there where your index finger goes. So I really like it. And ITEL has a very good fast sensor readout here that you can see it really reacts quite fast. And um, I have to admit, this is one of the faster fingerprint scanners uh, in this price range, but it also has face unlock. So let me try and get that. There you go. Try it again. Oh, does it see me? There we go. So pretty decent finger uh, fingerprint sets. Actually, really good fingerprint sensor and decent face unlock. I think the fingerprint sensor is faster on this phone than other devices in this price range. Now, let's move on to the gaming test because I know you've been waiting for that. And uh, like I said, this is a new processor that I haven't played with yet. The Spreadtrum 9863A. Let's see how it can perform. This is Subway Surfers, and it was running really well. I think this is actually even 60 FPS. That's crazy, because some MediaTek processors does not run this at 60 FPS. Yeah, this is smooth. Imagine that on a Spreadstream processor, huh? <laughs> is it beating the MediaTek now? Gosh, darned. Very smooth. I like this. This is actually very enjoyable. You can see it doesn't stutter very much or at all. I haven't seen one. Ooh, I like this. Yeah, this is good. Props to MediaTek. I mean, Spreadtrum or and ITEL for having a smooth subway surfer. So let's move on to a different game in just a bit. All right, guys, we're going to be playing PUBG Mobile. We're going to play smooth, medium, and classic. And I remind you, this is only two gigs of RAM, so. We'll see how it performs. Okay, so a little bit of lag at the start there, but this frame rate is pretty good. I'm not gonna complain about what? Okay, oh, there's a guy here right there. Hey! Nice skirt, dude. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the stuff, bro. So, speakers are on the bottom, and you can sort of muffle them by, by your palm here. You can sort of do it you know, hold it this way, but you can still sort of muffle the sound. I guess it doesn't matter. You should use your headphones anyways. There we go. Alright, let's get out of here. Oh. <laughs> that was pretty bad frame rate, too. Alright. So frame rate seems to drop a little bit in gunfights, but Honestly, not the worst. 
let's check this frame rate. Oh yeah, it's getting slower. The input is, uh, you know, you can see that I swipe to the left and it still seems to take some time to follow, but it's still pretty good. The temperature is 36 degrees still. Where's that plane? Oh. Alright, got him. Ooh, a little bit of stutter there. Oh, I'm terrible. Got him. Ooh, I got him. Jesus. That was a tough one. Ooh, frame rate is getting worse. Somebody's here. Oh yeah, boy. You got it. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah. Bra. Alright. That was cool. Woo! Frame rate got really bad. Now it's better now. Stuff, but you can play PUBG Mobile if you want. All right, guys, we're playing Mobile Legends here, and uh, you can see, yeah, pretty decent. Oh, a little bit of stutter there. They've uh, recently updated uh, Mobile Legends. I don't know what they've added. They said it's a ma big update. Could be like graphics are a little bit better, maybe? I think. This river area seems bigger. Oh, I think the tower had a little bit of shield there. Oh no, the AI. <laughs> the AI got scared. A little bit of a stutter when you're loading graphics assets. There's the guy. Got him. So, um, that kill was kind of anticlimactic there. Let me just get another lane going. Frame rate seems pretty good. Oop. Oh, he didn't die. Come on, kill him. There you go. Oh, a little stutter there, you see that? But overall, I think that's pretty decent for a 4,000 peso phone. Not bad. Uh, you can sort of interpolate a real game there. You could see a little bit of stuttering, but I think not bad for a 4,000 peso phone. Spread trim, 9863A processor, 2 gigs of RAM. Alright guys, so this is Honkai Impact 3. I'm going to set everything to high everything on and see how it performs obviously it's not gonna perform very well but i just want to know how it can do with these settings
Whoa, this is why you want to test it. Look at the frame rate on Honkai Impact. This is good. 60 FPS or at least 40, 50. Wow, look at this. Can you see? Okay, a little bit of stutter when you're loading other characters. Holy crap. This is good for a 4,000 peso phone. Okay, a little stutter there when loading the other part of the map. Skip. Oh, crap. Skip. Okay. And we're here in the rainy part. Let's see how the frame rate is on this. Yo, that's not bad. This is on the highest setting. Wow, that's crazy. I actually, I'm not going to lower the setting anymore because this is actually pretty decent frame. Rate. This is maybe 30 FPS here. And a lot of phones, uh, budget phones, struggle in this uh, area, this rainy area, because of the rain and all that. In this high end, even in middle graphics, they have trouble. But apparently, the Spreadtrum processor not having trouble with this guy. So, props to uh, iTel Vision 1 for the performance on Honkai Impact 3. Alright, so let's talk about the uh, photo or image quality of the iTel Vision 1. So, we have an 8 megapixel camera in the back with a VGA secondary sensor. And we have a 5 megapixel camera in front. Now, they're pretty decent pictures that, that come out of these phones. Though it seems to prefer a very, very long shutter speed. So sometimes you do get blurry images, especially on the 5 megapixel selfie photos. Uh, but I think the colors are pretty good, especially on the main 8 megapixel camera. Uh, the dynamic range could be improved. You can see that the sky is always blown out. But the colors are really nice on these 8 megapixel images. Now, uh, for video, I think the selfie camera has a better video at 1080p. But the main camera and the back seems to lag a bit. And uh, based on my testing, it seems to like have a 24 FPS recording, even though I set it at 30 FPS. Uh, which is kind of a, a mismatch or a wrong recording. Maybe uh, it was um, the processor slowing down a little bit or whatnot. But this used to be a problem with slower processors because they could only render video at a slower bit rate or a slower rate and sometimes skips frames. Uh, but I think the image quality is pretty good overall. I'd give it like uh, probably a, a B plus for this price point, 4000 Pesos. All right, guys, so let's wrap this up. So iTel Vision 1 or iTel P36 Play. I think this is a pretty good phone for 4,000 pesos. Now, 4,000 is getting up to the price of more bigger, more, more powerful competitors. But I think this holds up. We got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. We got a nice hand holdy design uh, full of accessories. You got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, triple slots. So I think it's pretty decent. I like the display. It's 720p, but it's nice. The user interface is very smooth. Uh, the cameras could be improved, but I think overall it's a great phone for 4,000 pesos. But then again, you're, if, you, if you go up to 5,000 pesos, you're getting into very competitive price points here. So if you only had 4,000, this might be a good choice for you guys. 
And that's about it for our impressions of the ITEL Vision 1. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please click the notification bell. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.